In this video, we'll talk about how to simplify exponents. And in order to help remember the rules for how do you simplify exponents, do you, do you multiply them, do you add them, when do you do what? Um, I'm going to talk about this little hierarchy. Uh, and so, you know, if you think about the hierarchy of different types of operations, kind of like your other operations, it's like, all right, taking the power of something is like the last thing you learn. And before that, you learn multiplying things. And before that, you learn adding and, you know, subtracting. Uh, and before that, there's nothing, right? So there's sort of an order to these things. It's pretty clear. Uh, and so here's the rule. The rule is this. Whatever you're doing, you always go one below in the hierarchy to remember what you do to the exponent. So what that means is this. So if you have something like this, x squared to the third power, and the natural question is, how do you simplify this? Is that going to be, you multiply these? Do you, do you, I mean, it's, you take two to the third power to get eight. Do you do two times three to get six? Or do you do two plus three to get five? What do you do? So again, the easy way to remember it is just, you know, hey, you just do one, one thing below in the hierarchy. So since this is a power, you're taking the x squared to some power, you're just going to multiply. And so that's going to be x squared to the third power. And it's going to be, you're going to multiply these two exponents, 2 times 3, to get x to the sixth. All right? Now, you can also think about where this comes from. It's because technically that's, you're multiplying x squared times itself three times. And so that's basically six x's multiplied to each other. But when you have something like x to the 2.1 to the 4.8, it's like, you know, the analogy sort of doesn't hold always, and so in order to easily memorize it procedurally, that's just one way to do it. Anyway, but what if you're actually multiplying the two things? What if you are what if you have x squared times x cubed? So notice, again, this rule for doing one below, that's the one below is what you do to the exponent. So here, the x squared and the x cubed, the two main objects, are being multiplied. So you go one below, you add the exponent. So that's going to equal x to the 2 plus 3, which is 5. And similarly, if you're dividing them, you subtract the exponent. So again, long story short, multiplying, you add. Dividing, you subtract. And if you're actually adding the two things, so if you have x squared plus x cubed, the, one of the most common misconceptions here is students often simplify x squared plus x cubed as x to the fifth power, because we're going to add the two. But keep in mind, if you're adding the two objects, you actually do nothing to the exponents. So what that means is you literally can't combine these. You know, I mean, these two aren't, aren't like terms, so you can't do anything. Even notice, even though, uh, so this is really just x squared plus x cubed. Even if you had like x squared plus x squared, you know, uh, you're, you're adding these two. And that actually simplifies. Those are like terms. So you could say that that's 2x squared. But the rule still holds because you're still doing nothing to the exponent. The exponent still is uh, 2. So again, this rule is just an easy way for you to remember what do you do to the exponent that you ever confuse, right? So, so that, that's what you do. So I'm, I'm just going to, in this video, then do one complicated looking example problem uh, that sort of combines a lot of these things. So, all right, looking at this, what do you do? Step one, panic, because, oh my gosh, that's uh, too much. But, all right, let's just break it down term by term. Let's first just focus on the top, and even then, let's first just focus on the x's. So there's an x squared here, and then there's an x to the fifth here, and they're multiplied. And so when you multiply, you add the exponents. So, so far, I'm just going to circle the, the things that I've taken care of. So, so far, that's those two things are, let's see, x to the... Uh, seventh, right? Because two plus five is going to give me seven. So that's x to the seven so far. All right. Next, I have this. Now that's the y cubed is being taken to a power. So that means I'm going to multiply the two. I'm going to multiply the three and the five. Three times five is 15. So that's y to the 15. Okay, that's not too bad. And then here, this p is on its own. So that could just stay there. All right. Numerator simplified, not too bad. Now let's simplify the denominator. All right, so now here's one thing to notice. This whole thing is being squared. Now, remember this. Whenever there's addition, like a plus b, and you're squaring it, as we saw, the distributive property doesn't extend, right? We can't say that that's a squared plus b squared, right? That ends up being something else, a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. 
However, when you have multiplication, not addition, but if it's a times b, the whole thing squared, then the distributive property of exponents kind of applies. So just like you could distribute, uh, you know, this a when there's addition here. So whenever you're multiplying something, you can only distribute if there's addition versus whenever there's an exponent, you can only distribute it if they're being multiplied on the inside. So here, this would equal a squared times b squared like that. So with that little rule in mind, let's this that means that this squared applies to all three of these terms. So that's really p squared, x squared, and y squared. So I'm just going to write that as p squared, x squared, and y squared. And finally, I have pi, which is a number, to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is always equal to one. And so pi to the zero power is just one, and anything times one, you know, is itself, so we don't even need to write them times one. So, all right, so, so far I've taken all this and I've broken it down into this. All right, now I could then go one step further and actually uh, simplify the exponents further because there's some overlap here in terms of the variables. So let's first focus on the x's. So there's an x to the seventh on the top and an x squared on the bottom. So if I wanted to, I would then subtract, right? Because division, so you, you have an x to the seventh divided by x squared. So when there's that division, you subtract the exponent. So that's going to be 7 minus 2. Notice here the order matters. If that was a 2 on the top and the 7 on the bottom, then that would be negative 5, right? So here, but here it's going to be positive 5 because it's 7 minus 2. So that's going to be x to the positive 5 on the top. All right, now let's take a look at the y. So we have y to the 15th here and y squared on the bottom. So similarly, we could subtract 15 minus 2 is 13. Okay, and then now finally, let's look at the p's. We have a p, whenever there's no exponent, that means it's really to the first power. So that's p to the first power, and then divided by p squared, so that means you subtract the exponent. So that's 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is negative 1, so I could write that as p to the negative 1. 